What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammock, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist known as mental illness, and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. If this is first time see, if this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victim survivors and thrivers of said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Today's episode is going to be about why you should not date when you are vulnerable, because that's how you end up with narcissistic people. <laughs> Why you should not date when you are in a vulnerable state. This is my just my advice, y'all. Before we hop into today's episode, y'all, make sure y'all check out the self love brand. I love me. The self love brand by Lee Hemme, um <clears throat> and whatnot. So the link is in the description of every video and podcast that I do. But yeah, y'all, you should not date when you're vulnerable because vulnerability, any type of vulnerability, y'all, is like blood in the water for a shark. Like, would you go? To the middle of the ocean, right? Cut your like, cut your shoulder, and hop in the water. Would you do that? Would you do that? Like, ask yourself this question right here. This is for men, women, non-binary folks, whatever you identify as, whoever you identify as. Um, <clears throat> would you do that? Would you go hop in the water? Would you go cut your arm and hop in the middle of the ocean? No swimsuit and just wait and just tread water. Would you do that? No. Most people would say, "Hell no, I'm not going to do that. I don't like sharks, Lee." I know what's in the I know what's in the ocean. So if you wouldn't do that, it's just very, very similar to dating while you're in a vulnerable state. I know people tell I know a lot of people tell you that you should date when you're vulnerable. Like, hey, go hey, the best way to get healed, the best way to get over someone is to get under or over to, on top of somebody else. <laughs> no. That's the worst way. Because y'all, you get these soul ties or twin flamed and burned up with narcissistic people because narcissists can sense it. When you are vulnerable, they take advantage of your vulnerability out. If you have, are just getting out of a relationship, whether your previous relationship was toxic or not, you are in a vulnerable state. Unless uh, uh, you might be in a vulnerable state. You're mourning the loss of a friend relationship, or whatever dynamic it was. You're mourning the loss of this relationship. So don't go out here and meet somebody right now. Because sometimes, this is why I say this. Because when you meet a narcissistic person, when you're mourning the loss of a previous relationship, when you're trying to get over somebody else, when you're in a vulnerable state, <clears throat> you feel like they are saving you. You feel like they are there for you in this time of need, in this moment of need. So you attach a little bit more to them. You see what I'm saying? You attach a little bit more to this person and you feel like that they are there for you. You connect to this person. You know, you haven't given yourself time to heal from the previous relationship and you connect to this person. It makes it harder to let go. It makes it harder because sometimes I talk to I talk to so many people, y'all. They get cheated on in previous relationships and leave immediately the first time they get cheated on in a previous relationship. But the first if that first person they date is a narcissistic person that's there for them that helps them get through this trying time, and then that narcissistic person cheats on them or does something worse, they don't leave the first time because now you're attached to this person. Now you're connected to this person. Now you feel like that you sometimes you feel like you owe this person something. You see what I'm saying? And that narcissistic person, that toxic person, that narcissist knows that they're going to make you feel like you owe them something. Oh, wow. So I was there when you needed me and you're not going to be there when I need you. Wow. OK. All right. I see how it is. I see exactly how it is. This is the this is the world, right? This is the earth, right? This is the world, right? You know what I mean? This is how it's got to go, right? <clears throat> But this is how it works. That's how it goes. That's how it works. You know what I mean? Don't date when you're in a vulnerable state. If you, again, y'all, vulnerability is not just losing a relationship partner. Vulnerability could be you just lost a job. Vulnerability, you've been in a vulnerable state could mean you just broke up with it. You, know, you and your best friend are having an argument. Vulnerability is you didn't get, you didn't, you didn't get, you didn't get the job. You didn't get the promotion. You didn't pass the test. Your mom just passed away. Your dad just passed away. That's what vulnerability is, y'all. It's not just losing a, a relationship partner. It's not just getting divorced or breaking up with a partner. Vulnerability extends. Vulnerability is open-ended. It's a, you know, vulnerability means something different to every single person. So if you're in a vulnerable state, if you feel like you don't have enough emotional space, if you feel like, matter of fact, if you feel like you're leaning, if you need to lean on someone else, don't lean on people you already know and not people that are sexually attracted to you. <laughs> don't lean on people that are sexually attracted to you because that's when you you lean right into the bedroom and get your little cheeks clapped by a narcissist and then you be addicted, be addicted to them. 
now they were there for you. You see what I'm saying? It was like narcissistic people, y'all, from the mind of a narcissist. Like, I don't personally, like, this is my, this is how my mindset. I know I said earlier that narcissists can, they, they, they can sense when you're vulnerable. I don't think they just go after vulnerable people, though. Because how they know you're vulnerable? You, like, you're not giving off a pheromone or something like that. You con- just do through conversation and knowing people. If this is a, mu- a mutual friend hooked y'all up, hey, hey, she just got divorced. Hey, Lee, this is my friend. Um, this is my friend. Whatever name of y'all. This is my friend, Shannon. Um, she just got divorced. She's just out here having fun. You know, I thought you, I know you're a good guy. She was going to hook y'all up. Gotcha. See, your friend just set you up with a narcissist. You see what I'm saying? Not knowing. She thinks I'm a good guy because only she thinks I'm a good guy because all the things she's seen is the good guy stuff I've been putting out. You see what I'm saying? I don't have a bad reputation. But your friend just unknowingly set you up with, set you up with a narcissist and she already told me that you were vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? That's how it happens sometimes. And yes, y'all, women can be narcissists as well. I'm just using myself as, a, as an example. You see how that worked though? Like narcissistic people, I don't know. I don't know if you're vulnerable unless you tell me. Unless unless we get to know each other, I don't know unless somebody else tells me. Unless you're looking sad at the bar and you're like, can, can the, you know, like the little cherry, um, the you, the little cherry, you're like, mm, stuff like that. You know, just in that space right there. That's how it works right there, y'all. That's the mindset. That's the dynamic. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just see you sad as hell and they come get you. Your body language. Sometimes they can tell vulnerability and sadness through your body language. You know what I mean? They just don't watch out for this situation, y'all, because they can sense it. Once they get to talking to you and they can sense it, because sometimes you trauma them. Sometimes, especially if you don't have anybody else to talk to and you vent to a narcissist, you might, like I said, it's like you might be, might be, might as well have this mic right here and be talking directly to the devil. You see what I'm saying? Hello, Satan. I just got out of a five year uh, relationship with my ex. Who I thought I, was, thought I was gonna spend the rest of my life with, and then they cheated on me with my best friend. So I lost my ex and my best friend, and I'm hurt. See now, Satan is on the other end of the mic. Satan got his headphones on. Satan is like, you know what? You're in luck. I got a nice narcissist for you, and they're gonna serve you up one. You see what I'm saying? That- <laughs> That's how it happens, y'all. I, I, mean, I don't know why I think of this stuff. But I know people are like, Lee, how do you think of this stuff? I don't know. It just came to the top of my head. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when you're vulnerable, not, they, I don't think they go, I don't think, I haven't ever went after a vulnerable person. The people that I went at, the, the people that I ended up with just happened to be in a vulnerable state. It was just like, hey, I'm vulnerable now. Like you tell, people tell, like this is the thing about, and this is one of the things about me um, and a lot of narcissists. We're easy to talk to, y'all. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like people tell, like yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Even before I started this social media stuff, people would just come to me and just, uh, in the bars or just whatever I was at and just tell me what was going on in their life. I'm chilling. This is men and women. This is not just not just women. This is people who just tell me, that, man, lady, this is going. I'm like, oh wow, really? Dang. Just tell me it's trauma dump. I said, say y'all. If you're feeling like you're in a vulnerable state, go talk to a therapist or a life coach or somebody to help you before you get out there in the dating world. Because if you are if you are vulnerable, it's more like, <clears throat> especially if you if you just went through a breakup with somebody. Let's just say you get just got out of a relationship with another narcissist, right? And they blamed you for everything. They told you you feel like everything was your fault. You go out and meet somebody else. You go out and meet another narcissistic person. You might already have, you might be carrying some residual self doubt from your previous relationship. And when you start seeing, when you start seeing the red flags of these, of this new relationship, you might ignore them or overlook them and just be like, no, 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 that's just, that's just, that's just my insecurities talking. This is my vulnerability. You, whatever it is, you might just, you might downplay it. The boy said, take your time to heal, y'all, because if you hop right back out there, I'm telling you, you're going to hop right back into a relationship with a narcissistic person. <clears throat> and it's probably not going to go well. It's probably not going to go well. Like it might start off hot and heavy in the love of your life right after you got a relationship, right after your, right after one of your parents passed away, right after you lost your best friend, right after your dog or cat got hit by a car, something like that. You mean right after your your ferret got loose and then come back home? Whatever the situation is, whatever whatever has made you vulnerable, that's what I'm just saying. Take your time to heal because if you do not take your time, I promise you. You're going to end up with a narcissistic person. And not only do you not only do you need to take your time to heal, but take your time to just give yourself some space. 
time to just and, and don't ignore the red flag. Don't just take time. If you see a red flag pop up and you think it's red flaggy, you may if you think it's red flaggy, that's my, that's a word that I've created, y'all. That's a word I'm gonna coin. Red flag if it's red flaggy, if it's like the little bit of a red flag, don't ignore it, y'all. If you if you see out the corner of your eye and you like, is that a red flag? Well, if what they just said red flag, if what they just did a red flag, I don't know, it could be it might not be a red flag, maybe a butterfly. It might be a butterfly flapping its wings down there. No, y'all, it's a red flag. Stop ignoring them. Because when you ignore them, you if you ignore the red flags early on, you regret them. You regret it. I, I haven't met a person who ignored the red flags early on and was just like was thankful that they did it. You know what I mean? I'm a, matter of fact, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a status up there. Has anybody ever been thankful they ignored the red flags? I'm gonna tell, I'm just gonna I'm gonna, let's I'm about to put that post up right now. Y'all gonna see it right now. Uh, you're gonna see it up. If you, if, I don't know when I'm posting the video, but you'll see it up here pretty soon. I do have to hop off here. Y'all have a one on one. If y'all look, y'all are still interested in the one on ones or my group coaching sessions or my in person stuff, um, mentalhealness.net is still live. Like and subscribe for more. Mental Healthness is out. Peace. Thanks so much for making this to the end of my video, y'all. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my self love journal on Amazon. Lee Hammock, I Love Me, a self love journal. Help you rebuild their self love and authenticity after a toxic relationship. Thank you.